Hello, everyone. This is Dr. Joseph Boroscano um, talking to you on behalf of Igenix Lab. I have some very exciting new tests to talk, talk to you about and also some, some guidelines from one clinician to another. And the title of my speech is, Are Tick-Borne Diseases Really a Clinical Diagnosis? Um, that's a really good question. And I want to show you how using a better lab and better tests at a better lab can help you and your patients too. So first of all, you know, you get mixed messages from the CDC. On the one hand, they say that their case definitions are not for making clinical diagnosis. But on the other hand, they say that they, you need a two-tiered test to make the diagnosis. So you're getting mixed messages. And the problem is in the real world, you know, if you start to diagnose your tick-borne disease patients based on clinical features only, and they don't have a positive test to back you up, you know, you might face and maybe have faced criticism, even trouble from others, from practitioners, insurance companies may not want to cover treatment or testing, medical and professional boards sometimes get involved. So is a solution to just not take care of these people? Well, of course not. The solution is to get a better lab and better testing. Now, why are they so insensitive? Well, there are a couple of reasons. One possibility is that you may be testing for the wrong germ. Now, we know nowadays by doing these better tests that Lyme disease in America is not just one strain, Borrelia burgdorferi senso stricto. It's a number of different species and strains. They call that Borrelia burgdorferi senso lato. None of the big labs that do ELISAs, IFAs, Western blots, PCRs, or T-cell tests have ever been validated for this broader grouping of Lyme Borrelia. When it comes to tick-borne relapsing fever, which by the way is a lot more common than people thought, and I'll show you data on that in a second, um, they've only been validated against two species and the testing they use has been very insensitive and I'll show you some reasons for that in a moment. So now what has happened is They've taken a group of patients who are seronegative on standard tests and using the Lyme immunoblot that Igenix has developed and also the tick-borne relapsing fever that they developed, these tests can look for these different species. And guess what they found in these seronegative patients? Well, they found all these other species were present. They weren't seronegative, they had clinical Lyme disease, but they were different species. 10 of them had Mayonii, some had Spilmanii, Californiensis, Guinea, I've said that, you see them all. Um, only one of them, this is now a series of 36, actually taken from a real clinician's practice. Uh, only one had the senso stricto classic American B31 Lyme strain that a standard test might have picked up. You notice that five cases could not be speciated on the immunoblot. When that happens, it simply means that either there are more than one species present and you kind of get confused picture, or there might be some species there that haven't been tabulated yet, and that's always possible. People and animals do cross borders. The second series I'll mention here has to do with tick-borne relapsing fever. 48 cases, they found Hermsii, Miyamotai, Trocarte, Trisicolite, 20 other species, I'm sorry, 26 other species, probably uh, Parkeri, Coriaceae, others that haven't been tabulated yet, but we know are existing in America. So the bottom line is you need a better lab, a better test that will look for these other species. It's not just stricto. Now the agenics immunoblots and also their broad coverage assays not only designed to detect multiple species, but they're more sensitive and more specific based on this new technology. The technology uses recombinant antigens that increases the sensitivity, increases specificity, and extends the species coverage. And as I showed you, you can detect multiple species of the different Borrelia. They also, and this immunoblot is basically designed to totally replace the Western blot. They also offer the broad coverage assay, which is another Igenix exclusive, and that basically replaces the ELISA because it like an ELISA is a simple test, but on the other hand, it does detect multiple species. Look at how much better this is. First of all, it's not made from cultured lab strains that never saw or tasted the blood of a human. They're recombinant antigens that are specifically engineered to detect multiple strains and multiple species. Here, instead of relying on a random culture, precise amounts of antigen are delivered and they're put in exact locations. There's no electrophoresis and migration to worry about. So they know exactly what's there and how much is there. Also, the bands that they have, because they chose the bands, they're not just random. These are very specific. All bands are specific. There are no non-specific bands. And I'm going to show you this picture side by side. I mean, look at the comparison. I mean, you can compare. It's second, last century technology versus today. Now, how about the accuracy? The immunoblot, now this has been validated with multiple sample sources. The specificity by the criteria that IGENS come up with is between 97 to 99%. Even using the really strict surveillance criteria from CDC, it's 100% to 99%. I mean, it's really, really very specific. Now, the sensitivity using the Igenix criteria um, is very interesting. What they found is that invalidated samples, blinded samples from the CDC when they tested it, early Lyme, 
that immunoblot, when you combine IgM and IgG, picked up 93% of cases. Never before have we had a test in early Lyme that's this accurate. For example, you get someone who comes in with a summer flu, they got aches and pains and headache. What is it? Is it Lyme disease? What do you do? Do you wait and see what happens? Do you test them a month from now? Do you maybe give them antibiotics and see what happens? What if they have an atypical rash? What is it, a spider bite, an allergic reaction? Is it cellulitis? Here we have a test finally that based on CDC test samples will pick up 93% of early Lyme disease cases. So that's basically a game changer right there. Um, the sensitivity, um, 97 to 99% for established Lyme, 93% for early Lyme. Even CDC criteria show early Lyme 73% and late Lyme 93%. Far, far better than the coin toss of the ELISA that I showed you before. Now, you know, it's not just Lyme disease. Um, in 2018, the study was done where they tested actually over 10,000 patient samples from all around the United States. And they found Babesia is number one. They found Lyme and relapsing fever, Borrelia, Bartonella, Anaplasma, Rickettsia, Ehrlichia. You can imagine a lot of different things. But 40% had at least one separate co-infection, in other words, two pathogens. 15% had three, 4.6% had four, and almost 1% had five pathogens. So it's not just Lyme disease. Babesia testing, very important to realize that there are different species in this country, not just microti. Babesia duncana was thought to be on the West Coast, but it's not, it's nationwide. Um, Igenix will test for all of these species. Their fish test is an Igenix exclusive. It's genus specific, will cover all the broad species, far more sensitive than a smear in all stages, early and late. And it scored 100% on validation testing. I don't think anyone else has done that. They offer serology for, I, for Babesia and um, but microti and Duncani both, and the PCR likewise, genus specific, they can pick up the different species of Babesia. Barnell is really difficult to detect, you know, because they can live in the blood, they can live in the tissues, they can live within cells and all three at once. The other thing is that when they're in the bloodstream, the levels in the blood is very low and it's variable, so it's very hard to pick up. The other really big important thing is that they're major biofilm builders. And I've actually seen uh, videos of blood in, you know, from people where the giant blobs of biofilm in actual blood vessels embedded with Bartonella. Um, the problem here is that embedded organisms um, can, can be very difficult to detect with different types of blood tests, and I'll talk about that in a second. So what Igenix has done is developed an immunoblot for Bartonella, and this is exclusive to Igenix, no other lab has it. And the big thing about it, number one, as I mentioned earlier with immunoblots, they use recombinant protein technology, that makes the most sensitive tests out there for serologies. And the other thing is it allows multi-species capability. The importance here is that nowadays, every time you look at Bartonella, you find more species have been detected. And nowadays we talk of over 40 different species and many of them can infect humans. And in fact, there can be co-infections of different Bartonella species in the same patient. And this has been recorded and reported upon. So this immunoblot can detect all the most commonly found Bartonella species, including Polyrae and Bergorfii, which are the two killers. Um, and because of all this, it's the most sensitive serologic test for Bartonella that's available anywhere. I also want to talk about the fish, which is a really important test. It's a genus specific test, which means you also have extended species coverage. You get a positive mean you have Bartonella and that's it. Now the huge advantage of this, which is what I talked about before, is the biofilm issue. The fish is the only test that can detect organisms embedded in biofilms. This is researched from back in the mid 1990s, they discovered this. And because Bartonella is such a giant biofilm builder, it makes the fish the most sensitive direct test that's currently available. And finally, especially for patients who have limited B cell function, you can do a T cell response assay. Igenix calls it an IgX spot, also exclusive to Igenix, and it will pick up uh, immune reaction by T cells to the presence of Bartonella. Rickettsia, we offer Igenix. PCR and serologies for all the major pathogens. And my advice is get both the serology and the PCR for maximum pickup. I want to close by talking about customer service. Everyone knows that Igenix really in the field of tick-borne disease really is a leader. I mean, many ways clients can get information. Customer service people, by the way, are very heavily trained and knowledgeable, happy to help you out. The salespeople likewise are heavily trained by physicians and we always exchange in scientific articles and going to seminars together. Dr. Shah is a lead scientist. She's great on the phone. A very comprehensive website you should check out. Got a lot of great information, scientific articles, even webinars. So that's my presentation for today. I thank you all for your attention and best wishes.